So I think uh, we can start. Uh, yes, uh, let us start. And then people can show up after a while. I mean, uh, the first part, maybe not everyone is interested in hearing about, for instance, how to use the Kepnik says They already know how to do that. So, okay, uh, welcome to, uh, to this course. Uh, my name is Pedro Ojeda, and, and here is my colleague, uh, Birgitte Britzer. Yeah, and, hello. Uh, yes, uh, we will be showing today how to use NAMD and BMD on our Kepnik guys uh, cluster. So you, sh you should have received an email from Birgitte uh, telling you the information about this course. In particular, uh, the schedule for today and tomorrow. And also, what is the location of the material, uh, which is in a Git repository. Yes, and we, we will show you how to clone the repository or how to deal with that uh, online. And also you just have received a document for important information containing this information that I already uh, told you, uh, besides, for instance, the information about the Zoom link and uh, the project ID that you will need to, to run the scripts for NAMD. In addition to the compute project, you receive a storage project. And this is the recommended place uh, where you uh, should clone the repository. And also we got some reservation for today and tomorrow so that you don't get into the normal queue and your jobs will start uh, uh, quicker. And uh, at the end of the course, uh, we kindly ask you to uh, complete a survey. Um, this will help us to, to improve the material and to include some uh, other topics that you may be interested in. In addition to this important information document, you receive a document for the Q&A. And here uh, you may type your, your questions and then uh, we will address them as soon as we can. And this is a preferred uh, method to communicate with us, although you can write your questions on, on Zoom. Uh, this is the preferred method because in this way we can track uh, the question and see if that is solved or not, uh, which is not uh, really easy in, in Zoom. Okay, so for this first part, uh, my colleague Birgitte will start with a short introduction to our Kemnekaise cluster and with particular emphasis on how to deal with NAMD scripts. So Birgitte, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, just one moment, I'll switch this to presentation mode. I'll just share my screen. Oh, this is in the way. Okay, so I'm going to use this first, and then maybe I will open um, a terminal window so that we can look at that at what is going on. So I'm going to give you a very brief introduction to using our Kepnekaise cluster at hspc 2 n uh, I will not talk much about the cluster itself. You can find some information about that online uh, on our websites. So first we will look into how to connect to the system, which you may or may not have already tried to do. 
and then some about watch editors are there because uh, it's a Linux system. So it may be editors that are different to what you're used to if you're used to using Windows. Then we'll look at the file system and the module uh, environment, which used to uh, access the various software installed. And then I'll give an example of using NAMD, how to load it, and then how you execute jobs on Kepnikaise, which are run through a batch system. And then I will have a short page about uh, all the important information summarized. So uh, if you do not already have some sort of um, SSH client that you like to use to connect, then uh, we would recommend that you are using ThinLink. And uh, if you have not uh, installed it, then you can download and install it from uh, this uh, URL here. And it is quite friendly to install regardless of your system. It will work on uh, Linux, Mac or Windows. So you just download it and install it, and then you start the client. And the name of the server you are connecting to is kepnikaise-tl.hpc2n.umu.se. If you are using uh, some other SSH client, not ThinLink, then you should connect to the regular kepnikaise login node. And that is the same server, but without the minus TL. So uh, on the ThinLink node uh, client, when you have started it, you enter the name of the server and you enter your HPC to end username. And then if uh, it's the first time you're running this, you should go to options and security and check that authentication is set to password. And uh, you should also check on the screen, options screen and uncheck full screen mode because otherwise it will, uh, especially if you're using a laptop, flow out and use uh, more space than your screen. So you cannot access all of it. And then you should put in your HPC to end password. If you don't, it will ask for it, but it will fail. So it has to be put in uh, here immediately in the, the login screen. And then you click connect and uh, then click continue when it tells you that the service host key is not in the registry. And then you will have to wait a few minutes and then the ThinLink desktop opens. And uh, now we assume you are on the system and then how do you edit your files? Uh, it doesn't have notepad or something like this if you're used to that from Windows, but it has editors like Vim or Nano or Emacs. And uh, you should probably use Nano if you are not uh, familiar with any of the other ones. And Nano is quite a simple editor, but it's also quite easy to use. So the most important thing is that you write nano and then whatever you want to call your file name. If it's a new file, or you can just say nano and the file name if it's something you already have created. When you want to exit nano, you say you click control and X at the same time. And then it will ask you if you want to save the file. So this is probably the easiest editor for you to use. Other options might be Vim or Emacs. So HPC 2 n uh, our systems are using uh, a lost of file system and all the, the uh, storage is actually on the same system, but uh, it matters what you use here. So you, when you log in, you get to your home directory and it is not very big. It's only 25 gigabyte. So you can run batch jobs there, but you probably will do not want to because of simply the size of it. So unless you have something very small, you do not want to put it in home. You can use that for configuration files, or you can use it for anything else that you want to make sure that is saved because this is backed up, which uh, the project storage is not. And the project storage is where you will be running most of your jobs. And that is 
about 500 gigabyte in this case, and that is shared among everyone in this course. And I will show you how to get to it. And also that you should create a directory under it for your own stuff so that not everything is put into the same big bucket. And uh, running in project storage and in the home directory has equal high performance. So you can also run through scratch but uh, that would be node only and it has less good performance. And if you're using scratch on a specific node for batch jobs, you would have to copy it to somewhere else afterwards because you do not have access to it except when the jobs are running. So this course, uh, the course project, this is actually the same uh, ID that we are using for the course project. That is also where the default storage for the project is. And that's because I picked to have it named that way. It's possible to have it named something else. But this is the path to it. And I suggest that the first thing you do is that you go and create a subdirectory under this uh, for, using, for storing your own files and for running any exercises that we are having in this course. So you change to the directory and then you use mkdir and for instance your username or whatever you want to call your directory so that you remember it's yours and uh, just one thing is that this storage will only be available for a few weeks until maybe around first of may which is the same as the compute project that we are running stuff in after that you should copy it away if it's something you want to save because uh, we will delete it at some point after that. So the module environment. Uh, on HPC 2N systems, and indeed on most of uh, the systems in Sweden, the pr uh, programs and software we have installed are accessed by loading them as a module. And what are modules? Uh, it is something that is used to set up your environment uh, paths to executables, libraries, etc., and uh, for one specific software package, it would be for, and we have quite a many of them installed. And it's used to uh, manage uh, your shell environment because you, it will load a group of environment variable settings, and you can also remove them easily. And that means we can, for instance, have multiple versions of a program or package installed. For instance, we can have several versions of compilers installed and uh, you will then just load the compiler and it will then set all the environment variables correctly so that when you say use GCC, it will use the correct version of this uh, compiler. And the modules are installed in a hierarchical layout. That means some modules are only available after loading a specific compiler or an MPI version or something like this. And we have something specific that's called compiler tool chains. And those are software bundles for complete environment for compiling or building uh, software. And that would be things like uh, the compilers themselves. It would be MPI libraries, BLAST, Lapack, Scalapack, fa uh, Fast Fourier Transforms or CUDA. And uh, the two main ones are FOSS and Intel. FOSS is the GCC ones and uh, the things like OpenMPI and OpenBlast, et cetera. And Intel is the uh, Intel compilers and Intel MPI and MKL. And you will need to load some of that before loading, uh, for instance, NAMD, and uh, we will look at that. So to list available modules, you would use ML Spider, then it will list all of them. And there are many pages of them. And if you only want to see what versions exist of a specific software, or if something is installed, then you would say module spider, that software, or just ML Spider, that software. And as an example, NAMD. So here you say ML Spider, NAMD. And then uh, this is what uh, the machine outputs. It tells you that there are two versions installed, one for MPI and one without MPI. 
many software modules have prerequisites, as I said. They can only be loaded after something else is loaded. So let's say that you wanted to check on uh, the NAMD version, you would say ML Spider NAMD slash the version you were interested in. And then you would load that and any prerequisites. With the uh, module load, the prerequisite module, and then afterwards uh, the module itself. Or you can put all of it on one line. You remove modules with module unload, the name of the module, or all modules with module purge or ML purge. And if you say ML or module list, you see what you have loaded. So here's an example. I will check on the NAMD MPI version. And I will say ML Spider NAMD 2.14 minus MPI. Doing so, it tells you you will need to load all the modules on one of the lines. So either you load GCC version 10.3.0 and open MPI 4.1.1, or you load GCC 9.3.0 and open MPI 4.0.3. So that depends on which one you need or prefer. And after loading that, you will also load this module. So like this, ML or module load, this and this, the two prerequisites, pre pre and then the version of the module itself, like this one. And then after it's loaded, let's check what happens. So we say ML and doing so tells me that all of this stuff is now loaded. And that means that some of uh, the modules had prerequisites themselves that were, that were pulled in. And uh, for instance, you pulled in uh, fast Fourier transform, scalar pack, some blasts and MPI stuff here. And there you also see the MD one. So you now have all of this stuff loaded. So when uh, we are running anything on uh, the compute nodes, we will have to use the batch system. And that should be used for any large or long runs. And NAMD definitely uh, qualifies as something that should be run through the batch system. The reason for that is that if you're running it on the login node, uh, you will use the resources so that it slows down for everyone who is uh, going to use the system. And our batch system is Slurm. It's an open source job scheduler and it keeps track of all available system resources. It enforces local system resource usage and job scheduling policies. And it also manages a job queue and distributes this work across resources according to the policies we have. So that you, your job will end up in a queue and then when, it's, when it has the right priorities, it will start to run. And we will mostly avoid that by having this uh, reservation to run in, and that will help us to run, re run the jobs faster. So in order to run a batch job, you need to create and submit a Slurm submit file. And uh, there are more information about that on our websites, but I will also give a short example. So when you submit a job, you use sbatch and the name of your job script, which you can call whatever you want, but uh, it's traditional to have either .sh or .sbatch or something at the end of uh, a job script. And uh, if uh, the submission is uh, successful, it will return a job ID number. So for instance, if I am running the, this NAMD job here, for CPUs, I say sbatch, the name of the job script, and then it tells me it submitted it, and I now got this job ID. And uh, later when it has run, output and errors will end up in a file called slurm minus this uh, job ID here, dot out. It's possible to throw everything to uh, error and output files separately, but this is not important right now. Uh, if you do uh, the command sq, you get list of all jobs. Or if you only want to see your own jobs, you say sq minus u and your username. And here in this example, I'm checking for me, which is b-b-r-y-d-s-o-e, which is my username. And I can see I have two jobs in queue. 
one of them here is running and the other is pending. And it tells me that this job that is running is running on this node. And the pending one is pending due to resources. That means there is not currently no resources available for me. You can add a flag called minus minus start to the SQ and it will try to estimate job start time. But this changes depending on other people submitting and running jobs. If you want to check on a specific job and get more information, you can do S control show job job ID and that you got here from the submission or either you can get it from SQ minus U your username and you can check on jobs here and use that job ID. You also use that to remove a specific job with S cancel the job ID or all your jobs with S cancel minus U and your username. So this is an example of a standard NAMD job for CPUs and Pedro will go into these more, but I will just uh, quickly say that some things that needs to be in all jobs is uh, first there's this sort of incantation. It just tells uh, the batch system that this should be run in the batch shell. And uh, that is important because that's the only shell that's completely compatible with the batch system. So just put that there and don't worry about it. Then you need to put in your project ID and the one we are using here is this one. Sneak 2022 minus 22 minus 237. And uh, that is the one you're using for this course. And if later you uh, are in another project or if you already are in a project then that you would put here instead. Then you can give your job a name and that can be useful if you're looking for it in a long list. And then you also tell the batch system, how long do you want your job to run for? And here I am telling it 10 minutes, I'm assuming it will run. And this is important because uh, if you ask for too short a time, then uh, the job will end before what you wanted to compute has finished. But if you ask for way too long, it will sit in the queue for a long time trying to get a slot in the system where it can actually run such a long job. So shorter jobs usually start faster, but it has to be long enough uh, that it will actually finish for you. So here I also ask for one node and I am saying that I want 28 processes. Then I am first purging all modules I may have. That's always a good thing to do. And since it has some output that I don't want to look at, I'm just throwing it to dev null. Then I am loading the DCC and the OpenMPI modules and then the NAMD module. And after that, I can now run my uh, NAMD file. And there is one very important thing to notice, and that is if we are using the reservation for this course. Since this reservation is for only for GPU nodes, you have to add this command here asking for GPU nodes. You can change it one or two here, but you have to run that because otherwise uh, you will not get anything. Uh, you will not get. Uh, any nodes if you're using the reservation. You have to add that even if you're running a CPU job. So that's important to remember. And if it's a GPU job, it's almost the same as you can see here. And I can also see that I don't have a line break here as I should have. Anyway, uh, the only thing to notice here is that you are asking for GPUs and uh, this means you're asking for two K80 GPUs. You can just ask for one. And if you are running a CPU job, that's probably what you want to do unless you need all the 28 cores because then you have to ask for two. Since when uh, you are getting the GPU part of the, the node, you also get the uh, CPU since no one else can run on them at the same time. Exclusive asks for exclusive access to the node so that you actually get it on one node. And then we do the same thing here. And uh, in this case, it's uh, the no MPI one we want for the GPU. 
So there are some various useful info. And that is uh, this, the project ID. And this is how you add it to your submit file. It will be uh, most of it set up in the examples, but I think you need to add the project ID if I remember correctly. Remember the project is only valid during the course and a few weeks out. And uh, there is default storage located here. Go put a directory under that for yourself. And then there's the reservation. If you want to use it, you add this for the first day today and this for tomorrow. And that is only valid during uh, the course itself. And that is what I had there. And I don't know if I should actually, I can log in to Kiplikais. It's probably a bad idea to do that there. I should probably use a thin link just quickly and show how it looks. <laughs> And we also see that it actually works. I don't know, did it actually show you this? Because sometimes uh, Zoom will feel like not opening uh, the pop-up windows for sh on shared screens. Do people see my thin link window? Yes. Yes. Great, okay. So um, you will get something that looks like this. And uh, you will go to applications and it should be system tools. And here you can pick a terminal window, like mate terminal. And when you do that, then you can do ML spider lmd. And again, you got it here. You want this for instance. So let's copy that. And then we are checking on it. See, it tells you uh, this is what you want to, to load it. So I will try and load that one. So I say this, and then I also copy that one and load all of it. And then I do ML and you can see now I got all of these things loaded. I'll try to do ML purge. And now I have nothing loaded. Okay, so I will stop my share. And then I will let Pedro continue.